Hey guys, how's it going? Companion here. So, I'm so sorry I couldn't do this video uh, when I really wanted to, which was like five days ago, because it was literally going to be the next video, um, but then, yeah, I got sick and stuff, and then we had that break of several videos missing. So, it is the Tavern Brawl video. It was one of the most epic Tavern Brawls. It was like the perfect curve Tavern Brawl, and it had a lot of strategy, it had a lot of cool decks, and it didn't really exclude people. Who didn't have that many cards, I was able to pull in a few wins with my free-to-play accounts pretty well, and uh, I think the uh, the Tavern Brawls really are getting scaled up recently, and it's something people aren't really talking about, so I just wanted to say it, you know, good things are happening right now in Tavern Brawl. Last few weeks have been excellent, and it seems like every week it's just outdoing the last. So, th uh, this last week, uh, it's over now, but uh, I'm guessing that when they are going to do re repetitive Tavern Brawls, because they have shown that they do intend to repeat a lot of them. Maybe we'll have this one again, so I can maybe give you guys some of the strategy that I had. And at the very least, you can enjoy some of the games at the end. So, um, the idea was that on turn one, you'd just get uh, a random one drop from your deck as a draw. It would basically manipulate your draws, so on turn one, you'll get a one mana card from your deck. And if you don't have a one mana card, you just get a random card. On turn two, same thing. You'll get a two mana card, and if you don't have a two mana card left in your deck, well, you just get a random card. Turn 3, turn 4, turn 5. And after you get turn 10, I think you just get a random card. So, um, that's that's the idea. And uh, it works pretty well. Um, the best way to actually make a deck, I found, was you just get the one drop that you want to always get on turn 1. So, it's usually going to be Zombie Chow, but some of the classes um, maybe have better ones. Um, then you just pick a 2-drop that you like. Uh, originally, I thought Millhouse Manastorm was a really good 2-drop, but it happened to not exactly be the case because a lot of people are running um, a lot of spells. So, mm, mm, I don't know. 3-drops, um, you know, Classic Spider Tank was pretty good, and if you run Classic Spider Tank, uh, you can run if you're a mage, maybe like a Goblin Blast Mage. Um, you know, a lot of good 4-drops, a lot of good Class 4-drops, so you can kind of pick whatever you want. Um, Fell Reaver, I think, is by far the absolute best 5-drop in the entire game. You can't really run Big Game Hunter because um, you can't have situational cards in this format. So uh, Fell Reaver just goes unchecked and just levels your opponent's face. Um, I think just because I had Fell Reaver and my opponents didn't have Fell Reaver in almost any game, I just smashed their face in constantly. You only need one Fell Reaver, um, but it, it kind of helps to double up on a lot of the other cards because you want to fill up these slots. And after Fell Reaver, you want multiples of each mana card. So you want, like, uh, you know, just, just generally good six drops. So, like, Pilot of Sky Golem, maybe Sylvanas. Um, maybe if you're hungry, you put in, like, High Mains. Just all the really good ones. Uh, just so you have a higher number of them. Because after turn five, you're going to start removing cards from your deck. Um, Dr. Boom is obviously by far the best seven drop. So you might only want to have Dr. Boom. But you have to keep in mind that you're probably going to lose at least six cards from your deck by the time you can have a chance to draw Dr. Boom. So you might not actually end up drawing Dr. Boom on turn seven. You might instead get a random card if he was your only seven drop. And um, eight, just all the eights you like. But I think uh, Ragnaros and Keltuzad are the strongest ones because they're the most aggressive. Um, for nine, it just doesn't matter at that point. As many nine drops as you want, as many ten drops as you want, unless you're playing uh, for very specific ones. For instance, I think Mage, you'd want like Pyroblast, you want to end the game on turn 10. So with Mage, just put in two Pyroblast, but don't have any other 10 drops, because you want to draw specifically that one. Um, and then you want to have filler cards. So the Giants over 10 mana um, are always really good. Uh, zero drops are super important, because um, you can mulligan hard for zero drops. You'll never draw a zero drop. You'll never draw a card like a Molten Giant. Right, so um, it, it helps if if your opponent does zombie chow on turn one, and you do like wisp wisp zombie chow. Well, you're winning, you know. And there's there's no cost for the wisp because you're not going to draw those cards anyway, unless you have like a dead draw. But the only chance that you have a dead draw is going to be if you fell revert, and if you fell revert, you probably already won the game. Okay, so it's it's very unlikely to actually screw you over. Uh, the main issue is if you have so few low curve cards because you want to get specific ones, it's kind of hard to fill up a deck. And the best way to do that is um, if certain slots are kind of like whatever, you just dump a bunch of cards in that slot. You try to double up on the ones that you have. So, yeah, you want to draw a zombie chow on turn one, just put in two zombie chows. If you have to draw this 
specific two drop on turn two, put two of them in. If, you know, you're running spider tank and you don't care that it's a mech, um, well, there's a bunch of three drops that are about as good as spider tank. Even shit like Cobra is pretty good. So you just, you just put in, you just, you can just have like 15 three drops to fill your deck. You're only going to draw one of them, and if they're all about as good, it doesn't really matter. So you want to be very, very specific, um, but then when, when it doesn't matter too much, you want to just dump cards in there to fill up your deck. And with that, with that strategy, you're going to kick ass. Um, there are some like cards that are pretty fun, pretty good. Cards like Demon Fuse are actually pretty interesting because um, you can play Eternal and Flame Imp. Flame Imp is a card that you might want to run over every other one drop, as I mentioned. Some of the class cards are a little bit stronger. Um, and then you can get Demon Fuse. Um, it might not work if you go second, um, but then, you know, you might want to run double, you know, Voidwalker, uh, double Flame Imp, maybe. Uh, Voidwalker is maybe a better target for Demon Fuse. So, um, and you can try to mulligan for one drops. So you can maybe adjust to uh, either going first, going second, or whatever situation might come up. But if you can get a Demon Fuse on a Demon, you're usually going to win. And you can set that up in this case, so that's really strong. Uh, Demon Fuse uh, gives your opponent a Mana Crystal, but he's still only going to draw the turn-based card. So if on turn 3, he could have 10 mana. Um, but he's still going to draw 3 drop from his deck. Okay, so it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. On that note, some people were playing cards like Astral Communion. Astral Communion is okay, um, but you have to set up your deck in a very specific way. You're going to need a, a one drop, two drop, three drop, and the only four drop, of course, Astral Communion. And then everything else needs to be like eight, nine, or ten, because you need to be drawing random cards. If you have a five drop, you're going to draw a five drop, even if you have ten mana crystals, which is not what you want in that type of deck. A lot of flexibility, a lot of cool mechanics, a lot of great gameplay. So, uh, yeah, I want you guys to check that out. And if you guys are excited about Tavern Brawl coming up as much as I am, check it out. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Zero drops are good as fuck then. Nothing can stop me. No Shit's over, right? We just won. So you, you still manipulate your opening hand, so your drops are actually really good. So many spells. Okay, that didn't work out so well. I'm not too happy about Millhouse anymore. For the life binder. Have a seven drop. They just give me nothing. Oh, it just draws another card, I see. No, 
on my target on me. an option. I like the Bane of Doom in hand. I won't need Sacrificial Pact. Mm, I'll get a random card on, on that. Mm. The main issue is whenever I go second, You can just kill that now, and that's really bad. Prepare to face the mighty oh, okay. Well. Okay. Dread Steed Boys. Okay. What did he discard? Yeah, some really shitty cards there. Push forward. Still only gets a four drop here. Oh, why is it five? Why did he get a five drop? Oh, because Astral Communion is his only four drop. So he just drew a random card, and that just happened to be a really good one. I see. Gets a ten? No, he doesn't. Giving him a mana crystal doesn't doesn't affect anything. Push forward. Okay! something to kill a flame imp like sacrificial pact okay sucks. We must cleanse the sun well. Wow. Demon fuse backfire again.
Yeah, he just had it in hand. Like, after I played Demon Fuse, he had a 4 and a 5. Uh, and he gets 4 from that. Oh! Oh! Oh, it's amazing! Easiest game ever, dude. Unless he has Dr. Boom, then it's not so easy. Fuck. It's almost like Demon Fuse is a horrible card. Almost. We must cleanse the sun well. Okay. Yeah, you want to kill that because there might be a Melganus here. Minions, servants, soldiers of the cold. So again. Blackwood! 